여러분, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the sports session for the uh, Pyeongchang Peace Forum 2021. My name is Kim Min-hee. I'll be your uh, mistress of ceremonies for today. I'd like to thank you all for coming here despite your busy schedules. And also, we do have many participants joining us online. Thank you all very much for being with us, and a very warm welcome to you all. This is the fourth Pyeongchang Peace Forum, and I believe this year's Peace Forum is more significant than in any other. We are living in a COVID-19 situation, but we are overcoming this pandemic together, and in that course, the value of peace is very important for us all. Which is why today, in this gathering, where we will be having discussions of peace, seems all the more significant for us all. I would like to again welcome all of you, and with that, we would like to kick off this session. This is going to be held on five themes, economy, sports, DMZ, peace zone, SDGs, and public diplomacy and uh, practice on peace. We are going to be discussing various themes and subjects of peace. Of them, we are having a sports session one right now. We want to understand better what how sports can contribute to peace, particularly under the theme of strategies for successfully hosting Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games. We want to look at the earlier objectives and the strategies to successfully host the Winter Youth Olympic Games. With that, I would like to invite the moderator, Yu Seung-min, president of Pyeongchang 2018 Legacy Foundation, who will be the moderator. He is also the director of the Anti-Doping Federation, and from August 2016, he has been a member of the IOC. He has also been of chairman of the Korea Table Tennis Confederation and is now the president of the Pyeongchang 2018 Legacy Foundation. I will now hand over the microphone to him. Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you very much indeed. So we're having this uh, sport session to talk about the uh, strategies for successfully hosting the Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games. We have such a list of distinguished guests, and we're having this session in both online and offline format. And there were various difficulties uh, to be handled, but we're having the speakers who are joining in uh, from the opposite side of the world. We'll be uh, looking at the uh, strategies um, as well as uh, the experiences from the previous Winter Olympic Games so that we can set our journey uh, towards a successful 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games. I'm the IOC member, um, and I'm also the president of the Pyeongchang 2018 Legacy Foundation. I really look forward to this meeting today. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to learn a lot from the uh, speakers from all around the world so that we can set a strategy for 2024 uh, Youth Winter Olympic Games. Uh, we are going to have a discussion with five people, four speakers. 2018 Legacy Foundation and IOC member. I'm honored and privileged to moderate this session. I'd like to briefly introduce our distinguished speakers and panelists. Virginie Febre, Chair of the 2020 Lausanne Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee. And Leandro Larosa, CEO of the 2018 Buenos Aires Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee. Kim Cheol-min, Secretary General of the 2024 Gangwon Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee. And Zhang Hong, Chair of the 2024 Gangwon Youth Olympic Games Coordination Commission. Lee Dong-min, short track athlete, who are representing our youth from Gangwon Province. 본 세션은 동시 통역과 함께 온라인으로 개최되며 아시아 최초의 we're having an online uh, world, an uh, online session, and we're going to have a great discussion to set the uh, strategies for successfully hosting Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games. I am going to first ask Mr. Leandro La Rosa, CEO of the Buenos Aires 2018 Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee. Buenos Aires 2018. The floor is yours. Hello everyone, Anio Haseyo. Uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, to be here today in this uh, very important forum 
that is not only focused on peace, but also linked to the legacy of fantastic Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, the same year we celebrated our Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires 2018. Next, please. For us, legacy uh, was a key driver of our plans, uh, but the only way to achieve it is through concrete engagement activities with the local communities. For this, I'd like to summarize some of the key success factors in the organization of the third summer edition of the Youth Olympic Games in my Buenos Aires. Next, please. We wanted to bring uh, the sport where people usually go, instead of us trying to bring them uh, to traditional big stadiums. This way, people and athletes were closer and the Olympic experience is lived in a new way. I will refer more uh, to this a little bit later in the presentation. As the title of my presentation states, Buenos Aires 2018 engagement as a priority, is the only way to achieve this is by starting as early as possible with pre-Youth Olympic Games activities at schools, local clubs, and every opportunity we might find at the very active city of Buenos Aires. Also, the value of inclusion was key. Starting from the opening ceremony to ticketing system, everything aimed to create the most inclusive experience possible for our people. Innovation must always be a driver, but to be innovative doesn't mean to spend more. Innovation should also be present when we plan efficiently the resources needed to deliver the best in a sustainable way. As you will see in our master plan and linked to the first driver of bringing people to sport, the urban characteristics of the venues responded to this strategy too. Creating the first urban park in the middle of the city downtown. Finally, if we aim to capture the attention of youth of the world to deliver the values the Youth Olympic Games represents, the whole strategy must be based in the digital world. So because every Olympic journey starts with the lighting of the torch, I'd like to share with you a short video that represents how we wanted to reach every spot of our beautiful country. Next, please, on the video. Thanks, Nick. So when somebody see the extension of Argentina and the 24,000 kilometers made with our torch tour, you can imagine the number of resources and budget that this can represent. But I can tell you that this plan was developed together with the governors and mayors of most of the 24 provinces of Argentina. We put together the team, that took the torch 
on our motorcade provided by our top IOC sponsored Toyota and the mayors of the cities following an event manual developed by our engagement department were the force delivering every event and torch relay at the different provinces that you can see. Thanks to this joint effort, the provinces, our sponsors, and our own team, we were able to show the world the beautiful spots of our country while bringing the Youth Olympic Games to the greatest number of people. Everyone had the chance to taste the yog and understand the values that support it. Next, please. After this fantastic journey, the opening ceremony was the next step. But again, it was made the Argentinian way. The obelisk in the middle of the city is not only the most famous icon we have, it is also where every celebration takes place for the citizens of Buenos Aires. Our famous barbecues championship or the celebration because Argentina won some football match happens there. And because we consider that the yog should be a celebration for our community, is that we understood this was the place where most of the previous concepts I described were going to be achieved. Free and accessible for everybody, 300,000 people gather around the obelisk. And thanks to Olympic Broadcasting Service, it was available live around the world to celebrate all together. Next, please. For the first time, and thanks to the leadership of President Bach and his fantastic team at the International Olympic Committee, we had a perfect balanced gender equality games in the history. Next, please. As I mentioned before, we developed a master plan that brought the Youth Olympic Games to every corner of the city of Buenos Aires, finding the best locations, not only from the sport point of view, but also for the people to be able to attend. The athlete experience was also a key driver for us, concentrating as much sport as possible per park, allowing the young athletes to enjoy not only their own competition, but also their friends. So the Youth Olympic Village ambience was a constant celebration also for the first Olympic experience for them. Next, please. To achieve all this at the venues, we developed what we call a park concept. Each of these clusters of venues had its own personality, but extremely oriented for the families to spend the whole day there, thanks to the massive cultural and recreational activities that were as important for us as the sport competition in our planning. One million people attended our year, and thanks to this concept development, around 300,000 kids were able to enjoy the sport initiation program that allowed them to try a new sport for the first time. This one was my, one of my favorite programs because a kid that tried a sport supported by his sport hero is a kid that will be linked to the practice of sports forever. Maybe not as an elite athlete, but for sure he will be a healthier citizen touched by the values around the sport. Next, please. In order to manage the huge number of people we were expecting after all the engagement activities organized for four years before the Youth Olympic Games started, we needed a tool and a robust technology, but at the same time, for this to be free for the spectators. So again, working with the marketing department of the International Olympic Committee, we found a great solution with the famous Korean brand, Samsung, and we developed together this technological bracelet that was not only a tool distributed among our spectators, it was another engagement asset for the people to feel that they were part of this Youth Olympic uh, Games family. Next, please. Together, 
with the uh, IOC communications department and OBS, we developed another important tool for these days. That was the digital platform of the games. It was modern, state-of-the-art technology, completely focused on the youth and the general audiences of the world for them to be able to follow everything happening in real time. Next, please. As I mentioned, the activities pre-Youth Olympic Games were the heart of our project. An education program in the schools started around four years before the Youth, the youth Olympic Games. More than a thousand schools were part of this program and around one million kids were able to learn about the values behind the sports. Theater functions to discover the mythology of the Asian Olympic Games, sport initiation activities during the practice of sports at the school, and other programs were the trigger to bring around 200,000 students from public and private schools to the Youth Olympic Games for them to lead what they studied during this period pre yog And for me, it was one of the most important and reconforting of the whole project. Those kids that came with their teachers during the week came back with their families during the weekend. Next, please. So we worked two objectives in parallel. We developed educational guides together with UNICEF for the schools, but at the same time, we organized the largest talent identification program of Argentina, testing for the first time the majority of the population at the age of the Youth Olympic Games to form not only uh, an Argentinian team, but also to create a new generation of young athletes for the future. The outcome, the largest youth engagement uh, um, of my country in relation with the education around values, and at the same time, the best Olympic result in the history. So to conclude this part of the presentation, I'd like to ask for you to play the next video, summarizing the best experience I ever had organizing these fantastic Youth Olympic Games. Please, next. Bienvenidos a la ciudad de Buenos Aires. We are all assembled here to celebrate you as the young athletes and the real game changers.
next. So as, as you could see in this uh, fantastic uh, images, we had uh, not only uh, full venues with people really uh, engaged with the games, but also we developed a lot of uh, non-traditional uh, venues all around the city uh, for people to have a fantastic experience, but also uh, for, the, for the young athletes to live this, uh, this great new Olympic experience. So this uh, concludes uh, this part of my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. And uh, please, uh, Mr. Moderator, if you have any question later, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Leandro, for your great presentation. Actually, I was there, so I clearly remember that it was a super nice experience in my life. And congratulations uh, for your great achievement. And then thanks again for your attending. Uh, 다음 발표는, if we are okay with the connection, I will pass the floor to Virginie. Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, okay, thank you. thank you. The floor is yours, Virginie. Thank you. Okay. Uh, dear guests, dear participants, good afternoon. Uh, I wish I could be with you in Korea, but even if it is only virtually, it is a great honor to be part of the Pyeongchang Peace Forum. We are here today to talk about the strategies for successfully hosting the fourth Winter Youth Olympic Games. Gangwon 2024 will benefit from the strong expertise and the amazing legacy of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. The previous year were held in the Olympic capital, where the Gangwon Province was also elected just over one year ago. As the last host, it is a pleasure to share with you some of the reasons we think were behind the success of Lausanne 2020. Switzerland waited more than 70 years to bring back the Olympic flame, and we were not disappointed as the Games brought us certain days of great emotions. So first, let's take a look at a few of these moments uh, through this video. Next, please. From the very beginning of the Lausanne 2020 journey, there was one clear objective, to be a laboratory for innovation and use it as an opportunity to build young people's skills. Seeking to promote youth and develop talent, we actively involve young people in the preparation and the delivery of the event. First, internally with our staff, but also externally with the schools and universities. This resulted in a strong activation of academic partners at all levels of education, public and private. From the school children to university students, 130,000 young people participated in several education activities and in the very making of the project. From creating art for the athletes to the making of the mascot, the pictogram, the look of the games, 
the construction of the cauldrons and the podiums, the official song, the volunteer program, or the development of the educational program for athletes during the games. Ultimately, the involvement of youth in and around the games is one of the key elements in the popular success of Lausanne 2020. This was also one of the central components of the Lausanne 2020 communication strategy, which aimed to show the importance of the YOG as a vehicle for education. Following the mantra to create games for young people, by young people and with young people, youth involvement was at the heart of Lausanne 2020. For example, you can see on the central picture our first major event where the flame made its appearance. The Olympic flame of Lausanne 2020 was carried into the stadium by four young athletes and was welcomed by 3,000 school children, one of the highlights of the event. Each town of the region was invited with local representatives and two young students to carry their local flag to the ceremony and then return home with the Lausanne 2020 flag. This was also followed by a ceremony organized in numerous municipalities to raise the Lausanne 2020 flag at the town halls. Next, please. This brings us to our second key element, sport. Sport is, of course, at the heart of an Olympic project. When speaking about a youth sport competition, people tend to believe that the level of performance can be limited. Let me tell you, this is wrong. In three years from now, you will welcome the world's best young winter athletes. And despite the young age, believe me, you will be impressed by the high level quality of their sporting performances. Depending on the disciplines, some of them are already part of the elite and compete at a world-class level. Providing them the best infrastructures will ensure an incredible show. At Lausanne 2020, we enabled each of our host sites to become highly involved in the development and updating of their own infrastructure. They use the hosting of the competitions as an investment accelerator. Another key element was to offer free access to all the sport competitions in order to attract the local population. Thanks to the Games, we could promote sports and its benefits to the youth, as well as spreading the Olympic values across the country. The special relationship between Lausanne and the Olympic movement was one central element of our mission to make the promotion of Olympism. It was indeed important to remind the population of the impact that the Olympic values can have, while at the same time promoting how a sporting event can play its role at the heart of society. To set the dream, there was no better way to engage and unite with the celebration of the Olympic flame. We launched a four months tour across Switzerland. More than just a communication tool for the event, this torture promoted the Olympic movement and its values, the history of the flame and its symbolism. With school classes taking part in each stop of the journey, the mag magic of the flame reached thousands of young people. At each ceremony, the flame was carried by former Olympians, also involving the entire Swiss Olympian community. The tour passed through iconic sites such as Zermatt, the Swiss Parliament, also the United Nations headquarters in Geneva. Next, please. The Youth Olympic Games offer the advantage to be a laboratory for new ideas and innovations. We took this opportunity to turn our weaknesses into strengths. In close collaboration with our partners, we sought to innovate in the creation of sustainable solutions for the organization of sports events, maximizing existing local solutions. Here are four relevant examples. First, we partnered with neighboring friends to renovate and use their existing facilities for the ski jumping and biathlon competitions, creating a strong partnership 
for years to come. Second, as Switzerland has no speed skating infrastructures, the competitions were held on the frozen lake of St. Moritz. Third, a two-way system allowed us to increase the number of participants without increasing our costs. And fourth, with eight host sites decentralized, the IOC supported our commitment to delivering responsible games. Only public transport was proposed to the National Olympic Committees. More than 80% of the athletes and staff used the public transport to travel to the competition sites. A great success and a big step for the future. It was very important for us to consider some of young people's concerns, like the environment, climate change, and gender disparity. For the first time in Olympic winter history, Lausanne 2020 achieved gender parity with equal quotas for men and women. Finally, the establishment of partnerships generated new synergies. Lausanne 2020 has made possible the collaboration between sport, culture, and education, which is too infrequent in Switzerland. The collaboration between these entities has resulted in the Enjeu festivals to be set up. For two weeks, in all the host sites, but especially in Lausanne, this great festival celebrated the Olympic spirit and made the heart of the city beat, bringing together the local community, the sports world, and guests from across the globe for the occasion. All the program activities were free and accessible to the schools. A strong partnership with the IOC and with all our other stakeholders allowed Lausanne 2020 to achieve this success. Like in sport, you cannot do it alone and with a strong team, you can do it better. Yes, we are always stronger together. Next, please. Dear athletes, this is your time. Bienvenue à la capitale olympique. We welcome you to the home of the Olympic movement. Great to see the spirit and camaraderie between the athletes. That is what the Youth Olympic Games is all about. That was a dream of escape for Yu Young of Korea. And Amelie Klopfenstein has done it again. Three medals for the Swiss star. Thanks to Olympic Channel for capturing these wonderful sport moments. And thank you all for your attention. Kamza uh, Amida. This concludes my presentation. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Virginie, for your valuable presentations. I was there too, that it was a super uh, unique experience and super successful. Once again, congratulations. You should be uh, one of the great role models for Kangwon 2024. Uh, thanks again. Uh, 다음은 저희 이제 강원 강원 2024 First, we're going to invite. Next, we're going to invite Secretary General Kim Chol Min from the Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee to talk about the preparations uh, work that's underway. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Kim Tomin. I'm the Secretary General of Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee. We also just call it uh, Kangwon 2024 in short when we give uh, presentations to IOC. So I would like to refer to these YOG, these uh, Youth Olympic Games, as Kangwon 2024. I want to give you a status report on where we stand. First, I want to talk about the Youth Olympic Games, the concept of the Games, and the current status report of Kangwon 2024, uh, Road to Success, and the transformation. So what we hope the legacy will be of Kangwon 2024. Youth Olympic Games would allow for these uh, sporting activities of the youth to have very healthy bodies and minds. It's uh, based on life philosophy to better enhance the value of Olympic Games. So these are attended by uh, athletes, young athletes, ages 15 to 18. This began in uh, Singapore, a summer Youth Olympic Games in 2010. And we had Innsbruck, Lillehammer, uh, Rosen, and next upcoming is Kangwon 2024. We uh, just heard of our from our two speakers about the basic principles of the uh, youth Olympic Games, but we have for the youth, with the youth, and by the youth. And the main uh, elements are compete, learn, and share experience. Uh, these are the uh, key components of the Youth Olympic Games. We want to have fair competition for the athletes. And we also have various educational and cultural programs for the local youth and children in the area so that they can participate in the sharing of the Olympic spirit. For the athletes, they can develop their future career and they can grow as Olympic role models. And for the local youth in the region, they can participate in sports activities. And they can also grow and develop themselves by participating in various programs. Uh, next, uh, just on the status reports of the Kangwon 2024 Games, for now, we believe that it's going to take place uh, January 19th to February 2nd, uh, 2024, for about 15 days. This is tentative. And the potential sites are Pyeongchang, Gangneung, Jeongseon in Gangwon province. It's going to be uh, 15 categories, 17 games, very similar to the uh, regular uh, Winter Olympic Games. We are expecting to see about uh, 2,600 people coming from 70 different countries, of which about 1,800 will be the athletes. But of course, this is all tentative the, in terms of the time period, the schedule, the venues, and the categories. We will have to deliberate with the IOC to come up with a final decision later on. The facilities, the venues for the Games, we are going to make extensive use of the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games to try to make use of this, to try to cut down costs and be highly efficient. For transportation from Seoul to Gangneung, it takes about two hours by high-speed bullet train. During the Games, we are going to have a co rail uh, or another high-speed bullet train coming straight from the Incheon International Airport to Gangneung. These are the potential venues for snow games. We're trying to make use of the different facilities that exist right here, where we are right now, in the Alpensia Ski Resort, the Olympic Sliding Center, the Ski Jump Center, the Biathlon Center. They're all located here in uh, the Alpensia Resort, so we're trying to make use of the existing venues and resources. Uh, we also have various uh, ski resorts nearby in Yongpyeong and Jeongseon, and they could be possible candidates. Last week, we had uh, some de deliberations with IOC. We have a technical delegation. Uh, the technical delegation would uh, come in and go around the sites, go to the venues to inspect the facilities. The results will come out soon, about uh, next week or so, and this will be again shared with the IOC uh, representatives. For the ICE Games, we know that the facilities for the ICE Games are very well equipped. They have been very well managed. A lot of the uh, public agencies are in charge of uh, maintaining these facilities, and they've done a very good job, so we can continue to make use of these. A figure skating rink, 
the ice arena can host those games, the speed skating rink and the hockey center for curling. Uh, they will be all done in uh, in Gangneung. We already have those existing venues, so we can make use of those. We also want to have the Olympic Village in Gangneung. There is a Gangneung Wonju University, so we can make use of the uh, dormitories on campus as the Olympic Village. For these venues, as I mentioned before, uh, we are doing these due diligence visits to try to narrow down the candidates, uh, come up with a list of options, and there is a coordination committee that is going to have meetings at the end of March. They will be reviewing this list of options. Uh, this is uh, some of the more specific plans. For the first stage, by the end of this year, we're going to finalize our plan, what we call the addition plan. And we're going to complete the deliberations with the IOC and then make this uh, official announcement. We're going to continue to confirm the venues and facilities, work together with the local uh, municipalities to come up with a final plan. Next year, we're going to be more specific in our action planning. And from then on, from the third stage on from 2023, we're going to have simulations. Next, I would like to touch upon some of the uh, challenges that we still have uh, on a road to success. We want these Olympic Games to be for the youth and by the youth. So first, what we did was do a youth survey. We wanted to ask the youth what they thought about Winter Olympic Games and what they thought about Kangwon 2024 in particular. They said that they think that it's going to be very fun, exciting, it's going to be future-oriented, experimental, it's very challenging, and etc. And the uh, values that they want to promote is challenge, growth, passion, and courage, and etc. The organizing committee was launched in September of last year. This survey was held two months later, so in November of last year, but we were able to identify that the level of awareness for the Kawan 2024 games is still quite low. Only about 3% of the youth that we surveyed had a clear understanding of Kangwon 2024, and only 18% said that they thought that Kangwon 2024 games has something in common with them. So we want to try to raise uh, awareness even more among the youth leading up to the games. As a way of doing that, we want to come up with a clear concept and a clear message to show to the youth. And we're going to have uh, youth supporters, uh, youth reporters, so various different programs for the youth to participate in. And up until the first half of this year, we're going to continue to work with IOC to establish a website template and launch this official website. Uh, about April 20th is going to be D minus 1,000 days, so we're going to launch the uh, youth supporters then. Next year, we're going to have more communication strategies off online and offline. And from 2023 on, we're going to have more media, uh, advertising, do more promotions. And during the games, we're going to work very closely with uh, broadcasting teams, with uh, the networks, the TV networks. We want to strengthen our uh, connection to the youth and have more of participation of the youth because we want to have these Olympic Games really have youth at the center. Uh, we want to have the Olympic Games really foster the interest and educational opportunities and growth of the youth, have them participate as much as they can, and give the youth as much uh, opportunities to participate in the decision-making process. And we want to allow various opportunities for the youth to participate, not just as audience members or fans, but as opinion leaders, as volunteers.
and they can even be programmers to program uh, the different activities surrounding the games. We want to develop a vision. So right now we have another survey that we've conducted for about 500 youth to come up with a clear vision for the Olympic Games. There's also uh, some interviews, uh, in-depth interviews that we are conducting against about 32 potential candidates for the youth dream team. We are going to build on these uh, results to try to come up with a vision uh, for the Olympic Games. Uh, we're going to establish this uh, framework plan to foster the participation of the youth, have many interested stakeholders participate to come up with ideas. Next are some of our key challenges on participating better with the local municipalities. So we, in our host contract, there's various interested stakeholders there, different the venue operators, the local governments, the municipalities, Gangwon-do province, obviously, uh, various different partners there. And we are going to work together to operate the games very well to the best of our abilities. 60% of the staff are from governments, so Gangwon-do local government and from the federal government. So I think in terms of uh, communication, we have no problems there. And we also have a, a sort of a coordinating committee that bridges between private and public sector interested stakeholders. So we do have a channel whereby we can uh, communicate with the private sector stakeholders as well. So it's, it's also very important for us to collaborate with the community. We have these volunteer programs. Uh, work together with the local communities. And for the opening and closing ceremonies, we also want to bring in the participation of as many local community members, the local residents as possible. Try to bring in as many uh, local citizens as possible. I mentioned the host contract. We have to work very closely with the IOC as well, obviously. Uh, the for the Youth Olympic Games, it's a little bit different the way that the venues and the uh, sites are proposed and finalized. The For the uh, adult Olympic Games, you go through the bidding process, and it's very finalized. All of the proposals are finalized before you go into the bidding process. But for the Youth Olympic Games, we submit an outline. And most of the details are worked out together by the host and by the IOC. So it's very important for us to work very closely together with the IOC on different stages. The Coordination Commission the committee would review different steps along the process. So we have to work very closely with this committee and with IOC overall. We are uh, trying to strengthen inter-Korean cooperation with the opportunity of this uh, 2024 Gangwon Games. Even in 2018, for the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games, we would try to bring in North Korean participation, have a unified Korea team, to try to foster this atmosphere for peace and reconciliation. And I think that was very uh, instrumental in allowing for a successful PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games. And for these 2024 Gangwon uh, Youth Winter Olympic Games, as we've heard in the opening ceremony with the governor of Gangwon province and Mr. Bao, we here in Korea remain the only divided country in the world. And it's also significant that we have the Winter Olympic Games in Gangwon-do because this province also is divided. So by hosting the Winter Olympic Games in Gangwon province, we can foster inter-Korean cooperation, which will be very meaningful in and of itself. We also want to have the Olympic Games as a cultural and educational festival. The athletes, the local youth, the local teenagers, and the local citizens will all be participating in this one big festival traditional Korean culture and Korean ICT uh, technology would be converged together to try to present that idea to the people who come to the Olympic Games. As you know, uh, 
a Korean movie recently. Uh, Parasite won the uh, Academy Awards, and BTS is popular around the world. So we can showcase uh, unique Korean culture and arts to the world through the uh, Olympic Games. Next, I want to talk about the legacy of the uh, Kangwon 2024 Winter Youth Olympic Games. We want to tie our success with the success of the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. So we want to make use of existing venues and existing facilities to try to be environmentally friendly. We want to be very efficient in the operation of the games as well. I think that is very important. And one of the key uh, takeaways of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games is the atmosphere for peace and reconciliation with North Korea. That is something we also want to leverage with the 2024 Kangwon Winter Youth Olympic Games. And we also hopefully are hoping to have joint development of the ed youth educational activities. Because the Olympic Games are going to be led by the youth, we want to really try to put youth the front and center. We want our youth, uh, youth around the world, to be fostered as global leaders and messengers of peace. That is going to be a very important message for the 2024 Kangwon Olympic Games. And these teenagers can take charge of their own lives. They are the master planners of their lives. We're thinking of different committees, uh, the youth supporters, a youth committee, and they can be given uh, active decision-making rights and authority. And we also want to uh, have more discussions of various issues that the youth face right now, uh, such as education, human rights, and justice. And we want to try to present more of these opportunities during the games. <laughs> Lastly, we want to allow for long-standing exchange and cooperation among the participating youth even after the games has ended. We want our uh, Winter Olympic Games to have a lasting legacy. So we want to uh, really have a lot of different activities and programs and opportunities for exchange to the youth. We also want to uh, enhance awareness for peace, maybe through uh, a peace forum that is going to be held during the games. And of course, we're going to expand cooperation with other Olympic host cities. And this is going to be a very key uh, issue for us as well. So for Pyeongchang, Beijing, Nagano Olympic, they all hosted Winter Olympic Games in the past. So we can work to build on each other's legacies. These three countries, Korea, China, and Japan, uh, maybe the three countries can discuss uh, measures on uh, rotating host uh, host uh, capabilities, and maybe we can have a bridge program for uh, Lausanne, Kangwon, and the next host city uh, to try to hand over the legacies that we learned to each other. This has uh, been my status report on the 2024 Kangwon Winter Youth Olympic Games. Thank you very much. There. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was Kim Termin, uh, Secretary General of the Kangwon 2024 uh, Winter Youth Olympic Games Organizing Committee, and he gave us a very detailed status report on uh, what we can expect. And he said that the uh, preparations can be broken down into three stages, and we're only in the first stage, but it appears that he is really working very hard on that, and I would also do my best to be as the uh, vice chair of the uh, committee. And uh, CEO Leandro LaRosa, who delivered the presentation uh, as a first speaker, talked about the importance of engagement and participation from as many people as possible. And having uh, this an opening uh, ceremony in the middle of the city, uh, which was really an important thing, uh, more than one million people came out uh, to join this a festival, and I was even there myself, and especially the opening ceremony it was a memorable um, experience because in the middle of the city, uh, so many people just came out and enjoyed the mood over there. Uh, that was really impressive as well. And President Virginia, uh, who is the uh, president of the 2020 Youth Olympic Games in Lausanne, um, introduced a very creative and unique idea 
about delivering this uh, news format and had various uh, programs for providing different experience and uh, chances for exchanges amongst the um, athletes. It was a very unique opportunity. I was there myself, but the weather was a little too warm, so that concerned me a little. But nevertheless, uh, the event was held very successfully. And then the next one, of course, is the 2024 Kangwon uh, Youth Winter Olympic Games. So there's a lot to be learned from that previous experience. Uh, we're going to do our best to prepare our event so that it can become a successful one as well. So we've finished all of the three presentations, and we're going to have a panel discussion uh, session. Uh, do we have uh, Ms. Zhang Hong joining us online? Yes, uh, Ms. Zhang Hong is here. She is a, a member of the IOC and also at the uh, gold medalist in skating uh, from the Sochi Olympic. Also worked together on the IOC athlete uh, committee and also has a very important role to play as a president um, of the IOC Coordination Commission for Kangwon 2024, uh, building upon her her experience as an athlete as, as well as a member of the IOC to make a successful contribution for the 2024 Kangwon. Can you hear me, Ms. Zhang Hong? Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, uh, my colleague Liu Seung Min. <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, uh, you're a super uh, 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 elite career of uh, as a uh, Olympic champion, and uh, at this moment you are working as an IOC member and uh, and chair chair women of Org uh, coordination commission. Uh, can you please describe your dream and goals for Kangwon 2024? Uh, as a as a chairman of the organizing uh, coordination commission. Um, thank you. Um, so it's my great honor um, to be a chair of the coordination commission. So my dreams and goals for Gongmo 2024 are many, and I'm confident that will be achieved. I spoke of my experience in Pyeongchang. Um, I know that it's like to compete on the world stage with the best of the best. I also know what it is like to be small children um, with wonder, excitement, and inspiration in your eyes watching those whom have already made it to the top of their fields. So uh, I know that Gongwon 2024 has the capacity to inspire a generation to build on the strong legacy that Ping Chang left behind to create the own moment and its own story. I know that this will leave the local youth inspired, not only by what they see on the field of play, but also by the spirit of friendship, peace, and equality. I'm so excited to see and experience the festival of winter yug in Gongwon 2024 come to life. The yug is such a unique opportunity where the festival celebration means high-level sport competition. The yug is frugal and right size, which it makes it accessible to all. I can imagine myself in earlier 2024 watching a competition and hearing all the excited kids cheering and shooting and watching the sparkle in their eyes as they too become inspired. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your uh, comment. I have one more, one more question uh, because you participated in Pyeongchang uh, Winter Games. So it was a uh, very much uh, inspired message to the world, like promote peace, especially uh, South and uh, North Korea uh, formed joint team or many other uh, aspect. So what role can Gangwon 2024 have in promoting uh, peace? Do you have any, any comment or perspective of it? Yes, so I think that Gangwon has opportunity to play a similar role uh, to that of Pyeongchang 2018. As I have said before, the you are a catalyst for the social transformation. So by using the platform of the Yug, 
together with programs in place for following Pingchang, the promotion of peace through education can start now. As the slogan for this year Peace Forum indicates, peace here and now. Guangwang can make an impact now that will last for years to come. Thank you, Hong. I'm really looking forward to working with you and also uh, maybe we can see each other in person soon, as soon as possible. Uh, next, I would like to ask uh, Leandro. Leandro is, is there? Yes. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm really, really uh, impressed when I was there because full engagement of uh, uh, people uh, celebrate together, especially in the opening ceremony, uh, middle, middle of the city. Uh, as see your perspective, what is the biggest difference between the Olympic Games and Youth Olympic Games? I think uh, the main difference between uh, the two is, uh, is not uh, the complexity of the operation. Um, the yoga is, is the opportunity we have to work before, during, and after it uh, to engage with the local society in really very different ways, and mainly to leave a lasting legacy in our youth through the different programs that I mentioned, educational programs, uh, sport initiation, and, and the rest of the things that you can do. And, um, I think that uh, what you have seen and what you have, what you lived in Buenos Aires, and you are mentioning the opening ceremonies and other events uh, full of people, is just the result of what we did before, because we really started four years before working uh, with local schools, with uh, local clubs, uh, trying to engage as much as uh, youth as possible on the practice of, of sports and also uh, to educate them on, uh, on, on the Olympic um, uh, educational program that is, uh, is built around the values of sports more than uh, the sport itself. Um, the athletes, even though they, they are all looking to achieve the best possible sport results, the experience they lived before and during the yog, uh, following the educational and sport performance programs uh, the IOC conducted, is not only unforgettable, but it's, uh, it's also such a great asset for the future as uh, athletes and as persons. Uh, thank you. Yes, of course, it's really important, uh, you know, engagement uh, for youth and also create some educational program to provide them to opportunity to exchange their exp uh, experience each other and also respect each other. It's really important. Can you advise uh, to him, our Secretary General of 2024 Kangwon, or even or or a whole organizing committee for Kangon 2024 to any advice uh, or any comment or any suggestion for him is possible now? Yes, I think, I, I think you already showed uh, the world the fantastic capacity Korean people have uh, from the operational point of view during the Winter Games in 2018. So now uh, I, I would focus all my efforts uh, on, on again, on, on engaging uh, with the local communities through sports, uh, initiation programs, education, and again, other activities, finding efficient and smart solutions and leveraging on the fantastic education model Korea has, and also aligning the authorities' interest with the yoga objectives. If, if you can do that, uh, working again, slowly, with the time you have ahead, but starting now, uh, the results are going to be what you have seen in, in, in Lausanne, what you have seen in Buenos Aires. People get engaged because they feel that they are part of, uh, of this development together. They are not uh, guests. They are part of it. So my, my advice is, is that, obviously, you have to pay attention to the operations, 
Uh, you know how to do it, as I said before. Uh, so now the most important thing is, is, again, is to use as much opportunities that you can find with the local governments, with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of Sports, trying to find the best athletes in your country. Uh, but again, uh, the, the, what you have seen in, in, in Lausanne, what you have seen in Buenos Aires, is just a result of uh, a lot of years of working uh, with our communities. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Leandro, for your advice. It will be uh, uh, such a big helpful for prepared, uh, prepare of uh, Kangwon 2024. One more question, Leandro, sorry about it. <laughs> yes. Because, because yes. Uh, you know, I'm working uh, at the 2018 PyeongChang Legacy Foundations, which we created after the Olympic uh, Winter Games PyeongChang 2018 uh, to promote our legacy. Is a 2024 Kangwon is one of the, our great uh, legacy opportunity to promote peace or promote uh, Etc. So, can you uh, tell us about your uh, legacy plan or legacy uh, elements of uh, uh, Buenos Aires 2018? Yes. Um, right after we finish the games, uh, we continue with this with some of the of the programs that we had in schools that are uh, still happening. Um, also, as soon as we finish. Our games, that as, as I said during my presentation, was the best Olympic results uh, for an Argentinian team, thanks to the um, talent identification program that we, we, we put in place around the country to find the best uh, athletes to represent Argentina. Uh, we started again uh, uh, another program for the next summer youth olympic games so as soon as we finish uh this process of the, the the kids we found for 2018 and the kids that we are working now for the next uh, summer Oli uh, youth olympic games we will have a brand new generation of athletes that are going to be representing our country in uh in the adults in the, in the, the, the summer olympic games so again uh, there is, a, I think, a tangible um, um, legacy that is uh, the, the, the building of the Youth Olympic Village that now is a new neighborhood of the city of Buenos Aires uh, and, and other things. But the most important one, as we were trying to stress during this presentation, is the intangible legacy. The legacy that we, 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 we had uh, with our youth uh, that understood um, the values behind the sport, uh, working again from uh, from little kids in uh, in primary schools all around the city of Buenos Aires and all around the country, uh, we were able uh, to put in their minds uh, what it means, uh, what the sport means, and what are the values that are behind it. So that is uh, ha still happening. Uh, and, and I hope uh, it happens uh, for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, Riandro, for your contributions. Uh, let me ask Virginie, president of uh, Lojan 2020. You know, unfortunately, it was my last trip uh, uh, since the coronavirus uh, affected. So I really clearly remember that uh, it was a super nice experience. Uh, so, uh, you know, Kangwon 2024 is the uh, next Winter Youth Game as after the uh, uh, Lozan 2020. So, you, Lozan 2020 is uh, one of the great role models for us. So, can you uh, say what is the most important experience of your successful hosting Lozan 2020, especially Winter Youth Olympic Games? Can you tell, tell about uh, some experience or some advice or some tips for us? Sure. Uh, first, thank, thank you for uh, your kind words. Uh, there are several experiences and many factors that enter in consideration to, to achieve that success. Uh, like Leandro mentioned before, and uh, I think the most important 
in my point of view, is again engagement. Uh, the commitment of the youth, the school, the local communities, and the host region allowed for everyone for us to be confronted with Lausanne 2020 and to find a way to connect with it. This is what our story is all about, engaging people, allowing them to find an interest in the project, and then letting these wonderful ambassadors do the work. Uh, it is all these people that have been the best promoters of the project, the most fervent defenders of the existence of this event, they were the success of Lausanne 2020 and uh, definitely the games maker. Thank you, thank you very much. Engagement is uh, uh, yeah, really important. It was uh, uh, so many people engaged at uh, Lausanne 2020 because I, I stayed in the Lausanne Palace, but front of the Lausanne Palace, there is uh, many, many uh, activities, many, many celebrations uh, to engage the people, to use their some sports event or some kind of like party. It was a really, really uh, happy and unforgettable uh, moment. Uh, also, same thing, same, same question for any advice to uh, 2024 organizing committee is uh, really, really uh, useful for your advice. I'll try my best, but uh, I, was, I was lucky to be part of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games and from what I witnessed and also hearing the athletes speaking about the best infrastructure they ever had, uh, Gangwon 2024 will be able to benefit from this legacy. You have the expertise and the venues uh, ready to host successful games. It's a consequent advantage uh, for the organizing committee. Uh, you will have more time to focus now on the youth engagement. Uh, it will open the doors for new possibilities, and this is really exciting. Um, as a member of the Gangwon Coordination Commission, alongside uh, Zhang Ong, uh, we're really looking forward to, to support the organizing committee and to see what Gangwon 2024 will have to offer to the young people of Korea. But what I have, from what I have already heard from the previous presentation, uh, this is really um, exciting and uh, to see the, the progress and I'm really looking forward to, to follow that closely. So good luck with uh, all the preparation ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Virginie, once again for your uh, for contribution of this uh, forum. Uh, next, we do have a very important speaker here with us today. I think that uh, this person is very important because he represents the youth. Uh, we are here with Lee Dong Min, he's a short track athlete. I did have the chance to meet with him before. He is uh, one of the athletes who is working very hard and training very hard for the 2024 games. I think that he might be very nervous right now. He's quite young and he's here, uh, but of course he's excellent when he's out in the field. But here in this forum, in this conference room, I think he might be a little bit nervous. So I would like to ask you, Dong Min, after hearing these panelists and these different presidents and CEOs of organizing committees, what did that inspire you to do in terms of your own activities? Yes, well, I find it a personal honor to participate in this very important, very big conference. Uh, there are so many people here who are really working very hard and committed to the 2024 uh, Kangwon Winter uh, Youth Olympic Games, and I'm very grateful uh, for that. And I will also do my best to participate well, hopefully to participate in the 2024 uh, Kangwon Winter Olympic Games. Thank you very much. Yes, I do hope that Dong Min, you're going to train very hard so that within the excellent uh, resources and facilities here at Kangwon, uh, you can do your best. Why don't we all give him a big round of applause?
This uh, session is really uh, hosted so that we can deliver strategies for successfully hosting the Kangwon 2024 Games. Uh, our in Ver Argentina and Lausanne, they are coming from very diff difficult time differences. Uh, perhaps I can ask Mr. Kim Chomin to say some last words to your colleagues in Switzerland and in Argentina and elsewhere? Um, I'd just like to ask a, a little question for um, Lausanne 2020 President, uh, uh, President Virginie Favre. <laughs> yeah, um, because uh, this uh, uh, Lausanne 2020 was the uh, nearest uh, Winter Youth Olympic Games to uh, Kangwon 2024. Uh, uh, we are benchmarking this, uh, uh, you know, um, Rosen Twin to uh, as a role model for us. Um, my question is about Anju Festival. Um, I know this is this has been the very successful, comprehensive uh, uh, cultural event uh, uh, taking place in many uh, locations, including Lausanne and some other hosting cities. Um, and uh, what? Uh, I, my question is, what might be the uh, most challenging issue, and how did you um, overcome that uh, issue? And um, and, uh, and another uh, question is uh, uh, similar regards. Um, uh, I know there was uh, there were uh, two uh, villages, uh, youth Olympic villages, in Lausanne and Saint Moritz. Well, um, <laughs> I was curious. Uh, how did you uh, uh, host uh, uh, the opening ceremony and then uh, closing ceremony where you know there are two big uh, locations separated? That's my question. Thank you uh, very much for the, for the questions. Uh, first, uh, talking about the uh, Anjou Festival. So for us, it was really important um, to have uh, activities on side of the competition. Uh, so it was really a volunteer of uh, the city of Lausanne to organize this big festival, including lots of cultural events. So we had lots of partnership with the different cultural institution, and they all played a really strong role. So it was to involve them in the, in the creation. We couldn't have done it without them. Uh, so each one of them um, brought uh, their own activities. We also worked uh, with the different um, clubs from uh, the host sites uh, that also were there to, to help and um, uh, install the initiation, sport initiation. Um, then we, we left the the possibilities of all the host sites to, to create their own festival. So we had uh, totally different activities uh, from one side to the other side. Uh, some concert and some other one uh, going through the history of cross-country skiing with uh, old skis and uh, great, uh, great different uh, activities, um, uh, including uh, in all those uh, festivals en jeu. It was also important to be able to bring, gather all the people together at the evening for the Metal Plaza. Uh, you showed in your presentation a picture of uh, the attendance. We had a, a big crowd to come celebrate uh, the young champion. And also that was a big part of the athlete experience uh, to be uh, recognized for the first time um, at a big stage. Uh, regarding the two villages, uh, that was uh, quite a, a challenge, uh, but uh, it was uh, well treated by uh, an organizing committee right in St. Moritz. And uh, to have the best experience, to offer the best experience for the athletes regarding the ceremony, for the opening ceremony, they had a first uh, show in St. Moritz, and then they could... Uh, watch the, the ceremony live on a, on a big screen. Uh, for the closing ceremony, uh, they had um, the last competition world, 
uh, two days before the actual closing ceremony in Lausanne. So I got the opportunity to go there and uh, be part of a special a uh, small closing ceremony and uh, I can tell you it was uh, really friendly and it was important for the athletes to also experience uh, those moments of a lifetime. Okay, it's been a great help. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm very aware of the time. And uh, we're supposed to get questions uh, from the floor, but I know that there are a lot of questions that are coming in through the uh, simple flow. So I will try to I'll just take one or two questions. We have a question to uh, Mr. Kim Chol-min. So I was born in Daegwon-yong. I've lived here for 60 years. I am a Gangwon person, born and bred. Um, I think that the uh, opening and closing ceremonies for the 2024 Gangwon Games should be held at the Pyeongchang Dome. It was the main stadium for the 1999 Winter Asian Games and affirmed the commitment to hosting the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games there. So I think that the Pyeongchang Dome should be the host, should be the site for the opening and closing ceremonies. What do you think? Thank you very much for that uh, question. I think these venues for yeah, the stadiums and these different cultural and arts events, we have to look at them from a, as, as a phased approach because right now we're still in the preparatory stages. Right now, our focus is on looking at the stadium venues. So for the first half of this year, we're going to be focusing our resources on trying to finalize the uh, stadiums for the actual sporting games. But of course, the opening and closing ceremonies, they're also very important, and we have to finalize the venues for those ceremonies as well. I think very importantly, we have to look at the uh, carrying capacity of the venue. So how many people can be seated in the dome? And what different functions can the dome play? And another important thing is we talked about the importance of these different uh, cultural and arts festivals in other host cities as well. We also want to have uh, the venue that is right for these cultural artistic uh, events, and we have to listen to the uh, feedback and the opinion of the cultural artistic directors, the executive directors who are going to be producing the shows. So we'll have to take that into consideration. In the second half of uh, this year, we're going to be finalizing those other venues as well. So we will take your opinion into consideration. Thank you. We have uh, two minutes left, but we only uh, we have uh, 30 questions that have come um, through the simple flow. But that's actually related to uh, publicity and promotion. Uh, because of lack of promotional activities, not a lot of people are aware of the 2024 Kangwon Games. So what are some of the specific things that we need to do? So perhaps you can share with us uh, your plan for the promotion for the 2020 Kangwon. Of course, promotional activities are really important, but we have to think about this. Especially at a time uh, we're trying to organize this uh, Youth Olympic Games, and a lot of people, um, they spend a lot of time on social network. For example, URLs as well as uh, Instagrams or Facebooks, uh, these are different social networks we're trying to utilize. But of course, we have to consult with the IOC first in order to carry out our promotional activities. And there's also a template that we have to work uh, together with IOC to finalize. And for example, and it has to be aligned with other um, Olympic games, such as uh, the one that was held in Tokyo, uh, Tokyo, and it will be finalized in the next few months. So we'll be doing a lot of promotional activities utilizing social network. So thank you very much for your response. And yes, it's exactly 5 o'clock. I think we've come to the end of the session. So I'll pass the microphone I'm over to the uh, moderator. So thank you very much. We had a presentation session. Uh, we also had a Q&A and a panel discussion. If we had more time, then of course we would have loved to uh, take in all of your questions and answer them. But sorry we couldn't do that today. But I would like to give a very warm thanks to the moderator, um, as well as our panelists, the speakers, as well as the audience who stayed with us until the end of the program. Thank you very much for your efforts. Uh, so we just sh saw a short video of the Olympics. I think it is 
Uh, the one thing that can give us a lot of inspirations. Of course, there are a lot of issues to be held, but we really want to make a 2024 Kangwon uh, a success so that we can a step, we can take a step closer to uh, building peace on the Korean Peninsula and in the world. Uh, this forum is going to continue until the 9th of February. We're going to have a UN SDG one session to begin as a first event tomorrow. Thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.